Yo, welcome back to The Pulse on the Joy News channel on Multi TV. Now, there's one deal now that's causing a lot of pandemonium among civil society and also opposition political parties. I'm talking about the new mining deal struck between governments and Goldfields Ghana Limited. Even though the company is investing some $500 million in this new agreement to tap the country's gold resource, questions continue to emerge about the benefits of the deal for the state. Last week, the chairman of the Mining Review Committee, Professor Akila Kwasoya, revealed that neither he nor the MRC, which is the Mining Review Committee, were involved in the negotiations of the Goldfields mining deal with government. Now, this is in spite of the MRC's mandate as the negotiating team for government. The new agreement also had a fiscal stability agreement which granted royalty and tax concession to the mining company. So society group, the Third World Network, has also called on government and parliament to disclose the details of the agreement because it suspects some illegalities to place. But the flag bearer of the Convention People's Party, Ivor Greenstreet, is calling for the immediate revision of the new contract government signed with Goldfields Ghana Limited. In an exclusive interview with Joy News, he indicated that a reduction in corporate tax and royalties cannot be in the country's best interest. Rather than a, a situation where we find our laws and our policies and regulations almost only favoring those large multinational corporations abroad or those who are importing. So for instance, recently uh, uh, the NDC and the MPP who form a bipartisan parliamentary committee on mines and energy saw fit to reduce the amount of money that Ghana would earn from its gold, specifically with Goldfields Corporation, specifically also with their Damang, um, uh, and I forget the name of the other mine, mm. uh, whereby the taxation has been reduced from about 35% to 32%, and the royalties re reduced from about 5% to 3%, meaning a loss of revenue to the nation. And, you know, um, Francis, we've been here all these years. As, it, as you started, we were called the Gold Coast, and we are now Ghana. Where, where, where is the benefit that we have made sure that we have derived from our gold that has led to the benefit accruing to all Ghanaians through the creation of opportunity and you know work for all Ghanaians nationwide wherever they may be take mm -hmm. a look at what South Africa mm -hmm. have done with their gold look at Johannesburg these are all places where there were gold so clearly there's something that we have not been doing right and so clearly we can't continue doing things the same way but again okay. for the narrative on the mining the government says that the jobs have to continue then ne the negotiations will have to be done such that those who are in there the Ghanaians in that sector do not lose out ultimately. Mm -hmm. And so they have to negotiate some way, somehow, to get a good deal for us. Well, yeah, that is the, the reason they have given. You know, once again, that's what I, I, I speak of, intent. So, you know, um, one of the key um, aspects of um, uh, CPP as a party uh, is self-determination. That means greater self-reliance. That means greater control over our natural resources. Therefore, our mindset, our intent, is that, look, we have a situation whereby we're not generating enough as a country. We have all these problems with labor, as you're talking about, all these problems with lack of employment being generated. That means as a nation, we're not earning enough from what we have, what God has bequeathed us with as a nation, whether it's from gold or timber or cocoa or oil or gas or our export of our products. So why are we not earning enough? So therefore, our intent is how can we as a nation earn more, okay? And I think you do that if you have a plan, if you have the analysis, and if you have a group of people who are determined to achieve results in that direction. Because, you know, when you are negotiating with corporations like Goldfields or, or MPP did it under, uh, under with Newmont, and, uh, you know, uh, we've seen so many things that we claim we can't run or we can't buy ourselves. So why couldn't Ghanaian businesses raise the money to buy Vodafone? Okay, and, and make and turn it into a, an African telecommunications so, giant. So you're you saying the, so? the Anglo Gold deal was a bad deal? Uh, I'm not saying it was a bad deal. You know, it's one of those deals that was done. You know, that's not the Goldfields deal. That mm. was Ashanti. The Goldfields one is what I'm referring yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it's a it's a it's a bad deal for Ghanaians, and uh, and, and I don't think that um, uh, proper uh, you know assessment has been done. And I think there have been a number of um, uh, prominent persons who have come out mm. to say that they weren't consulted, that the thing, the processes have not been transparent, that the shareholders of Goldfields in South Africa know about the details of the agreement, but we as Ghanaians don't know and we're not being told. So why is that the case? So if you had your way, would you change it if you had opportunity? Absolutely. Not only change it, but demand more, because I don't think we're earning enough or have ever earned enough 
from our, our gold resources. Look at the, look, look what was achieved under by a, a military ruler, a champion. And the percentage we were getting from our, our, our gold resources from companies was far, far higher. And, and I think, that, you know, unless we, we as a nation have to sit down and say, where are we going to earn extra money from? Because at the moment we're leading, we're living hand to mouth. Mm. And if you look at countries like South Korea, Singapore, India, Taiwan, Malaysia, Brazil, that's what they do. You know, that is what they do. And that is what has led them to the point that they are at now. Because even as an individual in your own life, let's say as an individual person or as a small business, the way you're going to be able to move forward or succeed is if you accumulate capital. Okay? And therefore, similarly with a nation, you have to accumulate capital. You know, here we are, um, uh, formerly Gold Coast, now Ghana, with all this gold and so-called more gold in our ground. Otherwise, they wouldn't be thinking about investing an additional $500 million if there wasn't more gold there to be taken out to earn more money for them and their shareholders. We, you know, our shareholders are the people of Ghana, so we need to earn more for our shareholders, the people, through the nation, via the government. And uh, I think it is critical that at all times we find all potential avenues, you know, and roads to try and maximize the revenue that we can earn. I mean, look at the fact that all these years, you know, we haven't added value to so many of our products where we've been blessed with natural advantage and comparative advantage. Very, very unfortunate. I mean, uh, chocolate is produced in Switzerland, and they have no cocoa whatsoever. And they only decided, actually, to start producing chocolate in Switzerland. Let me tell you a secret. That is because they had so much milk, and they didn't know what to do with all this milk, which was produced through subsidies and all these things. And they decided, OK, what we can do is add a little bit of chocolate to this milk. A little bit of cocoa, cocoa to the milk. To the milk, and we have chocolate. And now they have and that, is, and that is what they produce. So, so I think we have to be creative. Mm. And by being creative, it means that we are sitting down and thinking, how do we get ourselves out of this situation and bequeath a better Ghana to our children and grandchildren? I think that you know, human beings are naturally creative and intelligent, and Ghanaians are naturally creative, intelligent, and hardworking. And we have so much you know, availability of human resource and natural resource. So we have to do more with it than we have done in the past. Okay. So clearly more questions uh, need to be asked about this new deal between government and Gulf Coast Ghana. That's causing a lot of controversy. Civil society groups are asking for the deal to be revised. They want details of it. it th that document should be released for everyone to scrutinize. Also, the Convention People's Party, and as you heard Ivor Green Street mentioned, there is a need for us to revisit that deal and really get enough for us as a country. Question is, how much are we getting and why? was the royalty reduced. Same for the corporate tax as well. Clearly questions that we'll try and get an answer to later on uh, here on the Join News channel on Multi TV. We're still staying with a bit of politics because the CPP has been speaking. Now let's move to the MPP. The new patriotic party is rationalizing comments made by the party's vice presidential candidate, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, condemned as inflammatory. Addressing party supporters in the Sisala East constituency in the Upper West region over the weekend, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia said the seat of the current NDC government does not adequately mirror the two dominant religious groups in Ghana. He then urged them to vote for the MPP in the upcoming elections to bring religious balance to the presidency. <laughs> Another major issue that I want to bring to the attention uh, of the people and yourself is that if we look at the Flagstaff House today, it does not reflect the people of Ghana in terms of religion. We, in this country, we are living peacefully and nicely, Muslims and Christians. So we believe in the MPP that the Muslims and the Christians should work together. And that's why whenever we pick a flag bearer, as a Christian, we pick a Muslim as a vice. And when we come and pick a Muslim as a president, we we'll pick a Christian as a vice. So if, inshallah, Nana Akufuado becomes president, he will swear with the Bible and enter the Flagstaff House, and I will swear with the Al-Quran and enter the Flagstaff House. So when we combine... When we combine the Quran and the Bible, Ghana will be the major beneficiary. It will be the, with the blessings of, of God will be on Ghana if we have the two religions in the castle. And that's the comment by Dr. Baumia that's drawing a lot of criticism from 
uh, the civil society groups, also the moderator of the Methodist Church of Ghana, uh, Reverend Emmanuel Asante, has been speaking about this, says these comments are not good for our politics today. Well, in spite of all the condemnations, we know that the MPP has been justifying these comments. We'll surely speak to the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, Mr. Lawson, who is with us online. We'll speak to him shortly. But let's first hear from the Deputy Communications Director of the MPP, Anthony Cabo, telling my colleague, Kwabna Chenchenhe Boateng, on Joy News today that these comments by Dr. Baumia are not ethnocentric, but rather a call for religious inclusion. I must insist uh, quite strongly that these statements of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia cannot in any way be compared to those reckless statements that were made by the former transport minister. That's one. Two. What Dr. Baumia had put out is indeed is consistent with the MPP's tradition. Since 1992, our very existence has been defined by our sensitivity to the cultural and religious diversity in this country. So since 1992, we have always selected a running mate who is a northern Muslim and a Christian uh, flag bearer. And the vice versa also is a possibility. Uh, going forward. And these are the statements that Dr. Baumia has repeated. And don't forget also, the MPP is the uh, only political party in this country that has indeed selected a northern Muslim running mate in Aliu Mahama, who became Ghana's longest serving vice president. And with President Kufu, we saw the awesome work that the combination of these two personalities have done. And so we have been quite consistent with making sure that we take into account the sensitivity of balance and inclusion. And we do that unashamedly, and we owe nobody no apology. We have done this in consultation with the National Chief Imam's Office since 1992. It hasn't become an issue. In 1992, our ticket was a, most, a, a Christian and a Muslim. In 1996, we did the same. In 2000, Kufo and Aliu, and it had no had no questions were asked no issues were raised and so i find it very difficult when the, you claim that uh, uh, these are some divisive comments uh, as you purported to establish in your queue but mm. however going forward the country's constitution the 1992 constitution enjoins political parties to ensure that the various demographics religion tribe and all are part of the national appointment so that's the Deputy Communications Director of the MPP, Anthony Abe Fakal, was speaking to uh, my colleague, Kwamache Chahin Bwating, earlier today on Joy News. Today, we can now speak to the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, George Lawson. Good afternoon to you, Mr. Lawson. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, happy holidays to you, first of all. Uh, many happy returns, sir. Are you still monitoring the limited registration or it's a holiday for you? You're resting. Still monitoring far away in, one, uh, in the Western region. Okay, all right. Uh, first of all, what do you make of the comments being made by Dr. Mohamedou Baumia that the Flagstaff House is religiously skewed? Very, very unfortunate and very reckless. Why is it reckless? Very, very, yes. And I heard uh, Anthony Kabu. Why is it that when it comes to parliamentary, they don't also balance it and have half Muslim, half uh, Christian? And again, it is not only Muslim and Christian religions that we have in this country. Where are the rest? So it is reckless, very unfortunate. He's finding that sort of religious system because that's what they've been finding. They have they are part of the group that have politicized, religious, tribalized this country. We need not to religiousize this country. We okay, are but, okay, but Mr. Lawson. So we talk of northern descent. We have not. We mm. northern descent. We have even made a northern a president. Have they ever? When the northern it was the time for the northern person to become a president, what did they do? They paid seventeen people. Against, uh, 16 people against him. So what is he talking about? Okay, well, Mr. Lawson, uh, briefly, which needs let's go to the points that they've raised we briefly. Talk of, uh, we have people, if, are you saying the flat house is only made up of Christians? What is this? He's finding that sort of uh, religious system. I, I, from his statement, I mean, I think the flat house is only occupied by Christians. That is what he meant. And it's very unfortunate, very reckless. He's behaving like Donald Trump. The one the U.S. because they are saying, I know the, know that he's a uh, Republican and uh, MPP. They are saying very, very reckless, very, very reckless, and very, very uh, dangerous to our democracy. Okay, Mr. Lawson, educate me. How is this statement dangerous? It's dangerous. The 
because they are telling Muslims that yes, they should have a representation. But we have so many representations. Our the, the national security advisor to the president is a Muslim. There's so many people who are Muslim. They are ministers of state. So many staff. Many. They are even if you don't take a day. So many Muslims are they from from his statement? What are, if you have to analyze it or what do you deduce from it that there's no Muslim there? There's so many Muslims at the Flagstar House. They pray every day at the Flagstar House. So what is he talking about? Being a, a, a running mate or a vice president makes that place a Muslim this and that. The Quran is there. Go to the Flagstar. You see plenty of Quran there. As you're saying, there's no Quran at the Flagstar. It's very unfortunate, very reckless. It's very dangerous. Okay, Mr. Larson, I'm still waiting for that element of how you justify that these comments are dangerous. How does it harm anybody? Insane. You're funny that sort of religious thing. It's dangerous. Once you're funny that religious sentiment, it's dangerous. The sentiment that he's funny, a religious sentiment, it's very dangerous. And what can be dangerous, more dangerous than funny religious thing? And we look at the whole world. Religion, religion, when you start finding religion, religious religion, sentiment, you know, it leads to something else. It leads to something else. And we must guard against that. So your but party is asking for... Sorry, Mr. Lawson. Him, yes, he's been making a guarded statement throughout because he's desperate for power. He's been pushed like a ship. So as a ship has been pushed like a ship, he'll be making those reckless... Okay, but again, statements. sorry, sir, but you're saying that his comments are reckless. What is your party asking for then? We, are, we have not asked for anything. We are asking Ghanaians to ask him. We will not ask for anything. We will ask Ghanaians to ask them. Those who are against those uh, religious sentiment, uh, the, the funny of religious sentiment, who the, the good people of this country would rather ask for an uh, uh, apology from him, not NDC. Mm. Because it's dangerous for a survival of this democracy of ours and this nation, young nation of ours, this young democratic nation of ours. Very, okay. very dangerous. So, and what's that against? And these are people who want power. If you want power, you start finding uh, uh, religious sentiment, you start finding tribal sentiment and political sentiment. Already finding the political sentiment already. I mean, such a person to not be allowed to occupy any, any high office in this country. Okay, so, very, very so, so, Mr. Lawson, with the same whip you call this reckless, this religious common reckless, should we make this a general hand that anyone who makes a tribal or religious a divisive statement should be condemned in no certain terms? Yes, anybody, anybody who makes that statement, either tribal, I, I personally am against any tribal, political, religious, because they are dangerous to the survival of this nation. I, 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 it must be condemned. Anybody, anybody must be condemned. So same goes for Madame Ativo? Every statement that is religious, that is this, must be condemned. Mm -hmm. Any, any statement that is religious, tribal, or political must be condemned. We need to move this country forward. Mm. We need not to politicize, neither tribalize or religialize this country, which we have done, and making this country go backward. It must be condemned in no, no certain terms or certain whatever. So all statements, for me, must be condemned. Okay, Very so dangerous to our survival. I, I do understand, Mr. Lawson. So internally... For your party, what's the procedure in dealing with anyone who makes such ethnocentric or religiously divisive I am saying it must be condemned. That's all. It must be condemned. Any religion would not make this country go forward. I mean, all of this in terms of tribalization, religiousization, mm. or politicization, that's not, we will not help this country. It must be condemned. All right. Okay, thank you so much for speaking to us uh, this afternoon. Mr. George Lawson is the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, sharing his thoughts on the comments made by Dr. Varumia. He, he calls those statements reckless and is asking uh, that it be condemned in no uncertain terms. Well, as the debate on whether or not we should be condemning the religious or ethnocentric comments rages on, one man believes this trend will never stop since it has a lot of political capital which wins elections. The CPP flag bearer Ivor Greenstreet has been telling us why in, the, in this interview. Unfortunate, you know, um, but not surprising coming from both either the NDC or the MPP. 
I think some one or two years ago, we heard uh, no person than a former Minister of Finance make some comments in the Eastern region, you know, um, uh, which he later tried to hide from, but has later also been very quiet since then. You, you speak of Mr. Osafoma. Correct. All right. And then now of late we have uh, comments from uh, the former Minister of Transport, uh, Jifa Ativo. Uh, very strange comments from an intelligence, you know, uh, person who has served in government and must know the effects of the things that you say. And so uh, I say not surprising because these are the two parties who claim to have world banks and uh, uh, you know, are always doing everything they can to empower their world banks or strengthen their world banks. You know, Convention People's Party, if you look at its history, what it has done, what it represents, our world bank is the whole of Ghana. You know, our world bank is freedom and justice, is truth. It's, you know, offering service to the people of this nation. And we feel that the kind of politics these two larger parties have been playing really is a reflection of how they've steered the affairs of the nation, which is why Ghanaians find themselves, you know, disappointed and frustrated and unhappy about politics and politicians, mm. because they come across as a group of individuals who are there not to serve the interests of the people, but to serve their own self-interest. But own is it not also interest. because, Mr. Greenstreet, that in the past, playing in the tribal card has become effective at winning elections in the country. Well, yes, yeah, so um, uh, that is where persons like yourself, media institutions like yourself and others, have a key role to play. That's why you're the fourth you know, um, realm of the estate, in the sense that you, know, you have to let Ghanaians know that they you know, need to take decisions based on, not on you know, um, uh, who they feel connected to in terms of um, uh, their ethnic background or tribe, but in terms of who has delivered to them basic things in their lives which they can you know, testify to that have made an improvement, whether for them as individuals, their families or their communities. And that surely has to be you know, the right way forward. And so we will continue trying to urge Ghanaians to do that because we're not a, like one of the larger parties with the same amount of media reach or the same amount of money. So we have to you know, uh, preach that very carefully because we believe we have the right prescriptions and solutions. And we believe that the more Ghanaians get frustrated by the inability of these two larger parties to deliver effective solutions to create opportunity in their daily lives, that they will look elsewhere. But, as you said, there's always this shadow, which, you know, is a shadow cast by these two larger parties for their own benefit to try and ensure that things remain the same. Right. Now, the moderator of the Methodist Church of Ghana, Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante, has also been speaking about the comments made by Dr. Baumia uh, in the Upper West region. He says... His comments must be condemned. Yes, I mean, the, the statement purporting to go around in the name of the National Peace Council is not from the National Peace Council, nor is it for me in person. Mm. You know, so I do not even know how that statement came out. I cannot speak the position of the council because the council has not met on this particular issue. I mean, this thing was said over the weekend and mm. people assume that the council is you know perpetually sitting so that as soon as something comes then this is the position of the council no we haven't met on this if you want to ask me mm. my personal opinion so i want your listeners to draw a clear distinction between the way i see it and not to take it that this is the official position of the National Peace Council. I highly respect Dr. Baumia um, as one of the leading figures in our political landscape. I admire him for his capacity to analyze our economic situations and all that. But this particular statement seems to me that, you know, we, we live in this country and we know that we have never ever voted on the basis of people's religious affiliation. As a matter of fact, in this country, an atheist can be elected into power as our president or as our vice president. Because when we are electing people, part of the qualification is not what religious you know, affiliation the person has. We should not. We do not vote on the basis of religious um, affiliation. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, we, we know that people who vote, for example, MPP has Christians and non-Christians voting for them all the time. NDC has the same, and I'm sure the other parties might also 
um, commandeer um, some supporters from the various religious groupings in this in this country. Um, when a statement like that comes from, you know, a person of that repute, it gives room for, you know, um, the uh, people who are completely, you know, religious or ethnic bigots to begin to, you know, use that statement that can create problems in our country. Extremists mm -hmm. can make all sorts of things with a statement of that nature. So I will plead, as far as I'm concerned, I think the statement is very, very unfortunate. Uh, it's my personal opinion. Mm. And I also want to advise our politicians to try as much as possible not to play too much of the religious and ethnic cards. They don't really help us. Let's talk about the issues. Let's talk about what we are capable of doing and allow Ghana. Right, so that's the moderator of the Methodist Church of Ghana, Reverend Professor Imelo Lasanti, speaking uh, earlier today on Join Us Today with Kwame Natchez and Hebo He's explained that for these comments being made by politicians that are either ethnocentric or religiously divisive, they should be condemned, and also for politicians to stop this practice. So we have a much more sanitized condition so we see our elections done properly, so people can vote based on issues and not based on where they come from or which.